Romans once used snails for beauty treatments. Now, 2,000 years on, snail farming is flourishing in Italy thanks to a new craze for slime-based skincare and health products. Uh, you can decide for yourself if that sounds like a good idea, but uh, in any case, how are they getting this slime? Danny Mitzman has more from Turin, Italy. My name is Monica, Monica Fissore. Just 50 kilometers southeast of Turin, Monica Fissore's farm could be mistaken for a very large vegetable patch. The tiny size of her animals means you don't need acres of fields to breed them. But if you peep under the temporary covers protecting the neat leafy rows from the icy temperatures, you can see thousands of tiny hibernating shells. Monica's farm is called Il Giardino della Lumaca, the snail's garden. How long have you been farming snails? Da quanto tempo? Uh, da quattro anni, from four years. <laughs> and how many snails? Do you know how many, more or less? There are uh, one million snails. We um, do uh, the snails only vegetable, uh, especially uh, sunflowers. Why sunflowers? Because the snail uh, like much sunflowers. Sunflowers, carrots and uh, cabbage. The food is very important, it's most important. Until recently, Monica's snails were destined for the dinner table, but now she's selling them for their slimy discharge. Monica's one of eight snail farmers in the small town of Cerasco in Italy's Piedmont region, home to the International Snail Breeders Institute. For the past 40 years, the Institute's been running training programs and carrying out research into the helix snail species. From nature to gastronomy, science to economics, they cover every aspect of snail husbandry. Simone Sampo, the Institute's president, shows me around the premises. Snail-shaped gadgets, as well as edible and non-edible snail products, are everywhere you look. Simone holds weekly seminars for potential breeders who come from all over the world. He's been breeding garden snails for 21 years and spent nearly a decade trying to find the perfect way to extract their slime. In passato si buttava del sale o dell'aceto portando In the past they threw salt or vinegar on them, stimulating the snails to produce slime, but also killing them immediately afterwards. It not only killed the snails, but also led to a much lower concentration of mucopolysaccharides in the slime than the snail normally produces when it feels fine. Mucopolysaccharides, like hyaluronic acid, are naturally present in connective tissue and important for hydration and lubrication. Happy snails, Simone concluded, would produce better quality, richer slime. In nove anni di studi siamo riusciti finalmente a creare. My idea was to prevent the snail from suffering and to make a machine that would avoid contamination and allow extraction from the same snails more than once. With our machine, the Muller One, we extract uncontaminated, standardized, cruelty free slime. We don't kill the animal. Free cruelty, quindi senza uccidere l'animale. The Muller One is housed at the back of the Institute in its own sterile lab. The freestanding machine is stainless steel with two plexiglass domes on top about the size of a takeaway hot dog stand. But instead of sausages, there are over 1,500 snails inside the domes and the drip trays not for fat, but for slime. Communications manager Sara Borio shows me the machine in action. Uh, with this machine, as you can see, uh, they feel pleasure because uh, after the extraction, they don't die. It's like uh, a spa for, uh, for snails. This is uh, ozone. So with the ozone, the, um, the snails are purified uh, of the bacteria and the molds. Half an hour of ozone shower or spray of ozone, then break and then it starts the second part which is the stimulation part with this stimulation formula made by natural elements. As you see with 20 kilos of snails you can produce in one hour because the cycle lasts one hour more or less three kilos of slime.
the, the slime go inside the container there. It's a, it's a pure slime. That slime in that plastic container, does it smell? Mm, it has a natural smell. If you want to, we can, uh, you can yeah, try. I'd like to have a sniff. <laughs> you can sniff. <laughs> It smells very pleasant, a bit yes. earthy, a bit um, grassy. Natural. Yes. There is not this sense of disgust, uh, like, I don't know, um, uh, fish or something. It's uh, very, very pleasant, I think. Uh, yeah, it's herby. Yeah. I didn't expect it to smell nice. <laughs> yeah. Despite limited evidence supporting the health and cosmetic benefits of snail slime, there's nevertheless been an explosion in the sales of pharmaceutical and cosmetic products containing the stuff. So much so, the Institute's just launched its own range. It's important for a consumer to be sure when they buy a product that this product contains a snail slime in reality. Do people react with disgust when you say there's snail slime in your products or your products are based on snail slime? Sometimes, yes, because I think there is this mental block. But uh, there is this uh, concept uh, nowadays that uh, we need to start using natural product, not chemical product. You know? The consumer is more aware of what he eat, what he put on the face, on the body. So there is a growing market in this natural product. Uh, there is space also for uh, the snail slime. Slime has also seen its way into cough syrups as well as beauty products. Over the past six months alone, there's been about a 40% increase in demand for the raw product from the cosmetic and pharmaceutical industries. Consequently, there's been an inevitable increase in demand for snails for slime extraction. The number of Italian snail farms has more than trebled in the last two decades, and Simone Sampo believes the trend will continue both at home and abroad. Unlike the animals themselves, this is a business that's definitely not moving at snail's pace. And that was Danny Mitzman near Turin, Italy.